Hi, Doug Skockle here again from Johnson County Community College in Overland Park, Kansas. Got a really good video for you here today to talk about how to become a better shooter. The three things we're going to focus on in being able to shoot this basketball better is number one, we're going to have, learn how to have good distance judgment. Next thing we're going to talk about is uh, how to have the proper amount of arch on the shot. And finally, and I think maybe might be the most important part of it, is to be able to shoot the ball straight. All right, the first of those three factors that we talked about is distance judgment. And uh, the thing that I, I find that, uh, you know, that, that's not a hard thing for most players to be able to do, that they can get the ball to go pretty much a correct distance. That's, that's not a hard uh, uh, thing for them to achieve. But what I have found is that what you're looking at, we call it targeting, what you're looking at really makes a difference in getting that distance uh, to go, uh, you know, the, the precise amount. Now, there's, here's what I found out in, about in targeting is that, uh, you know, a lot of things in, in shooting, they, they, they take this kind of a one-size-fits-all approach. I don't find that to be the case at all. I find that uh, in 47 years of studying shooting, that there's a lot of different uh, factors that, uh, uh, you know, uh, I may have one targeting uh, uh, skill that works best for me and someone else has a second targeting skill and a third person has even yet another targeting skill. So we're going to talk about the common uh, targeting uh, practices here and the pros and cons of it and uh, let you decide on what, uh, which one of those is going to help you to be able to shoot the basketball the uh, distance uh, that, uh, you know, that you want it. So again, a lot of people talk about either looking at the front of the rim. Josh, you can zero in right here uh, to this spot where I'm pointing at on the rim. You got that, you got it right there, okay. So what you're finding is a tiny piece of the rim closest to you. So even though this isn't the front of the rim, as it relates to the backboard, it would be the front of the rim if you were shooting from this angle right here. And so what you do is you find a tiny spot on the rim, and your objective is to shoot the ball softly just over the rim. Now, I think that's, for me, that's the second best way uh, to shoot. When you're, uh, your objective, again, is to shoot the ball softly just over that spot. The front of the rim, uh, being uh, over 20 inches away from the backboard, is not solidly anchored, and so if a ball hits the front of the rim, there's a little give, a little vibration, softens the basketball, and will allow the ball sometimes to, you know, to crawl into the basket. Right. On the other hand, some people say, let's look at the back of the rim. Uh, now, that's my least favorite. Uh, you know, this part, uh, first of all, you tend to hit what you look at. And so, if you're going to catch that uh, back iron, this thing is only about four inches away from the backboard, solidly anchored into the backboard. And when the ball hits this part, it's not going to, there's, there's no give. The ball's going to come away pretty hard. Now, I have a third method, and uh, hang on, I'll just get that here real quick. All right, this third method, uh, I call the bullseye method. And this is the one, uh, this is the one that I uh, prefer right here. It's part of my little homemade target, but uh, I'm sure it'll get, it'll get across the idea. I really favor this. Um, uh, there was a guy who uh, went to the US Army back in the early 1900s, and he said, I, I can help your marksman shoot, uh, uh, perform, and, and have uh, better scores uh, when they're uh, shooting their rifles than they currently get if you'll pay me X amount of money. And they said, well, if you can increase our scores, we'll pay you X amount of money. And so what he did talk to him about, he says, we're not going to shoot at the bullseye. He said, we're going to use, we're going to shoot at the center of the bullseye. So you can see that I have put a, a little black dot inside of our bullseye right here. So I'm not shooting for the yellow. I'm shooting for the black and maybe even a smaller uh, circle th than that black dot represents right there. But uh, what they, the Army termed it was pinpoint accuracy. And so that's, uh, uh, th here's what I'm trying to do. Here's my objective. When I'm shooting the basket, I am trying to shoot the ball not at the basket. I'm going to shoot the ball above the basket. And I want the ball to drop. I want the center of the ball, bottom center of the ball, to drop right where that black dot is. And by doing so, uh, I just, I, I mean, I can shoot the ball pretty good even in you know, my advanced age here, I'm almost 73 years old, um, because I, I think I've got a, a good objective. It makes sense to try to hit what you're looking at. So uh, I'm not going to tell you that uh, looking at the front of the rim is bad. It may be great for you. I'm not going to tell you that the back of the rim is bad. It may be great for you. I'm telling you that this one works uh, best for me. 
and has worked best for any players that have had problems with targeting, has worked you know, best for them as well. Now, one thing that we do, uh, Josh, if you could uh, take a shot up there at the basket uh, real quick. Um, just take a look up there. And uh, what we're seeing is the, uh, when you look up there, you're looking through the underside of the basket. All right, now come back to me, okay? Now come back to me. So you're looking through the underside of, of the basket right now. Maybe you can zoom in just a little bit so you can pick up the target. And that, can you see the black dot uh, in there? Okay. So I'm actually, I mean, I'm envisioning a, a target, kind of a, a, a two-sided target, you know, with the it, with concentric rings uh, on the top of, of the target and on the bottom. But you're look, most players are looking through the bottom of the basket. And so when I look up there, that's what I see in my mind, in my imagination. I see that black dot right there. Okay. All right, so our second factor in, in shooting success deals with arch. And uh, I'm going to give you some information here. It's probably more information that you really need or would want. But I, but I, I, like, to, I like to educate people, uh, give, give them as much information as I can, and then you decide how you want to use it. But I think it will help you in, in understanding uh, how to... Uh, uh, help a kid with the, the amount of arch that he's putting on a basketball. So I want you to think about this. Imagine you and I are in, or, or, I, I've decided that you and I are going to have a shooting contest. And uh, we're each going to put $100 uh, in it. You know, it's kind of like we're going to make a bet who can make the most free throws. All right? We're going to shoot 100 of them. But here's the deal. I get to shoot at a 16-inch rim. You are going to shoot at a 12-inch rim. Okay, and you put your hundred bucks in, I put my hundred bucks in. Well, right away you're saying, wait a minute, uh, that doesn't seem very fair. You know what, it, 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 you're right, it isn't fair. And yet, this is what happens with a lot of kids who have a flat shot. They don't have a reasonable amount of arch. What they're doing is the flatter your shot, the uh, less available space is, uh, there is for the ball to fit into the basket. And, and so I want to... Uh, you know, talked about that, so you can use that as an argument for a kid that shoots the ball, you know, not enough arch. So let's take a look at uh, what we've got over here. You can see I've got a clock, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 o'clock right here. I'm going to talk about some launch angles, right, shooting the basketball. Now, um, from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock is a 30 degree angle. From 9 around here to 11 o'clock is a 60 degree angle, obviously. 9 to 12 is a 90 degree angle. All right, so we're taking a look from, from 15 feet and inside of 15 feet. Here's what we found, that when you shoot at a 60 degree launch angle, in other words, I came, I came down here, like this right now, and matched this up to my shoulder. If I had a follow through that matched up to 11 o'clock right there, that's a 60 degree launch angle, all right? Well, here's what we found. Now, these are not, uh, these, uh, the top lines here, 12, 14, 16 inches, aren't precise numbers, uh, but they give you an idea of, of what we're trying to talk about. So a kid from 15 feet and in, if he shoots with a 6 degree launch angle, he's going to have 16 of the 18 inches of that inside diameter to fit the basketball through. All right? If you, and so that's 11 o'clock. If I drop it to 1045, which is a 52 and a half degrees, 7 and a half degrees lower, again, I'm giving you more than you want to know, but Bear with me. Uh, you've dropped, uh, the, you've, you've uh, uh, decreased the amount of space available now for that ball to fit to, to 14 inches. And then if you drop down here to 1030 or 45 degrees, by the way, this is, I've been showing camps all over the country. I go around the summertime and do uh, camps. Uh, people uh, have me come in. And uh, this is a real common launch angle, it's 1030. And 1030 says you're only going to be able to use 12 of those 18 inches. And uh, it's going to be really difficult for you to, um, you know, make a lot of shots uh, under those circumstances. Now, I want to come back to this 60 degree launch angle. From beyond the free throw line, from beyond the free throw line, it's difficult to shoot with a 60 degree launch angle for two reasons. One is, the higher you shoot the ball, two things happen. One is, it requires more force because if I'm going to do 60 degrees, 60 degree launch angle on three point range, for example, that ball is going to travel real, real high, and that means it's going to travel a long distance. Okay? And so um, what happens is that I have to apply more force. And if I apply more force, a lot of times I incorrectly will recruit that strength from my upper body, from my arms and wrists and hands and fingers. 
And I don't ever, I don't ever want more than 20% of my effort uh, strength to come from, you know, from my uh, arm hand unit right there. The second thing is that when you shoot it real high like that, now you have a, a law of physics takes over where a falling object, as I'm trying to remember this, falls at a rate of 32 feet per second per second, which means I shoot it real high and the ball starts falling faster and faster from that higher uh, distance and now the ball is, uh, tends to hit hard on the rim because it's traveling at a faster speed. All right, so those are two factors. So what we have found is that the 52 and a half uh, degree launch angle is the one you want from beyond, from you know from around 15 feet. Now there may be kids who can pull it off uh, at uh, you know again this is not a one size fits all. I'm just talking about some of the things that you know that you take into uh, consideration right here. So uh, anyway, 52 and a half degrees is uh, is going to give you a pretty adequate space to fit that basketball in, and that's part of the reason why. You're farther away. That's why that three-point shot is worth more points. It's a it's a more difficult shot, not just because it's farther out, but because there's a tendency to shoot with you maybe know, just a little bit flatter uh, shot and uh, reducing uh, the amount of space that you have to work with. All right, so let's talk about what what is reasonable arch. You're not going to run around with your players and say every time they get shot, hey, get, let me get this board in here and let's check your launch angle, so on and so forth. So how do you know what's a reasonable launch angle? Well, there's uh, it, it's what I call ball basket interaction. Any time that you shoot the ball at the basket, the results, whether you make it or miss it, leave evidence of what happened that uh, allowed that shot to do uh, uh, any one of a number of things. All right, so the, the basketball and, and rim interaction gives you a great indicator if, if your kid has good arch or not. And here's how you determine if you've had reasonable arch. Okay, there's three ways the ball is going to interact with the basket with proper arch. Number one, you are going to get more swishes because if you are shooting the ball higher, you're using more available space to fit the ball into here. The second thing that you're going to have is what I call deflected makes. Once again, I'm coming in more arch means I'm coming in at a steeper angle and the basketball will catch the rim and deflect downward into the basket. So we have deflected makes, right? We've got swishes, you'll have more deflected makes. And then the third one is what I call rim dancers, where the ball will come in and go bounce, 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 and falls into the rim. A lot of people say, well, I was lucky. And as soon as I see that, I say, that, that kid was not lucky. Uh, that kid had uh, you know, reasonable arch, and the ball comes down soft in that situation. It doesn't uh, rebound away hard. Yep. Now, Now, if you have a kid that shoots the ball flat, of course, uh, you've reduced the amount of available space to fit the ball into, and so you're going to have, again, rim basket interaction. And what you're going to see here is what I call rim rattlers. Uh, you're going to have balls that will come up here and they'll go, they'll rattle back and forth and pop out. You'll also have balls that, that will catch the rim and come away hard uh, because, you know, again, such a shallow angle they can't deflect down into the basket. So those are, you know, those are some pretty common uh, uh, things for you to look at to, you know, to make that determination. So if you've got a kid, again, it's, it's just, uh, there are some kids that shoot flat and they just don't want to shoot with arcs. It's just, it's so ingrained in them they're going to, you know, that the, the, they, they just can't make the change. And so, this device, uh, this is something I made. Uh, got the, the went to Home Depot and, and uh, got PVC pipe and, and uh, uh, cut it up. Put this thing together, about twenty bucks worth, I guess. And, and uh, Josh, you want to pan in here real close? We'll just kind of uh, the parts I'm showing here. I think these are about a, a foot long. That's a foot long. That's a foot long. That's about a foot. This is about a foot. Again, foot to foot. This piece, uh, uh, I've got it so I can break it down into two. Uh, that's coming up about, I don't know, four feet or so. The next piece is going up about four and a half feet. A little cross piece at the top. 
And uh, I am no handyman, so if I can put this thing together and make one, you can too. Uh, but anyway, this takes the uh, this takes all the instruction out of it or everything else. You simply set this thing between your player and the basket, and uh, you'll have to do some adjusting. All right, and uh, and I want to tell you this: that when you work with this thing, and, and a kid who has not been has not used good arts before, has not used reasonable arts, they are going to shoot uh, short at times uh, in the beginning. But if you keep them on this thing and uh, they keep shooting, the, you know, the brain will figure out, you know, it'll say, oh, I see, I get it, we're, we're going to shoot with more arch now, so I'll supply more power and you know, it'll start to happen. But just be forewarned, there will be times they'll shoot a little short at first. But once they get this ingrained in them, the number of bass it's going to make or going to, you know, that, that'll far outweigh any uh, little momentary uh, uh, problem, uh, you know, with uh, not getting the ball the correct distance. All right, so our third and final factor is being able to shoot the basketball straight. And I, I think this is the most important of the three. I want you to think about this. You could be, uh, not have quite uh, the proper arch, but if the ball shot straight, it still has a chance to get in the basket, okay? And uh, you could be, maybe not quite have your distance on. You might be a little short, a little long, but if you're straight, the ball can still go in the basket. But if you shoot right or left, you can have the perfect arch, you can have the perfect distance. If you're right or left, that basketball is not going to go in the basket. And so I like to uh, talk to our players about good misses and bad misses. And of course, the first time I talk about it, they look at me like that. You know, good misses, what's a good miss? Well, here's the deal. A, a, a player that misses right or left, those are bad misses. Those are really difficult to, con to uh, correct. And, and I, I, we'll have some upcoming videos where we'll talk about uh, how to have great uh, mechanics and, and uh, how to, uh, you know, the things that you have to do to be able to shoot the ball straight. But right or left is, uh, th there's stuff going on that, that's uh, kind of difficult to correct. But if you're a little long, a little short, let's say I shoot the ball straight, a little bit long, easy correction. I'll shoot a little shorter next time. If I'm short, easy correction. I'll shoot a little bit, uh, uh, you know, a little bit stronger next time. So again, uh, probably, uh, uh, one of the better illustrations I can give you is, is uh, of learning how to make a basketball straight is throwing darts at a dartboard. You know, we had that target here earlier. We'll pretend that uh, the, the dartboard is, uh, that target is right where Josh is right now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw some, some darts at that thing. So I want you to watch me throw these darts. Okay? And so what I have going on here is that I didn't have a dart coach, but the body knows how to get things aligned. And if I can keep the, the, the elbow makes the dart go straight, okay, the elbow's going to make the basketball go straight. Now, here's the things that you need to be aware of uh, that I think uh, stop people from, so, so a couple of things that stop people from being able to shoot the ball straight and get their body parts aligned so it's easy to shoot the ball straight. All right, so there's a couple of things that uh, I, I think can help you uh, right off the bat be able to shoot the basketball straighter. And... Uh, that deals with, a lot of times you hear people say, you know, square up for your shot. I mean, you, you hear that over and over, square up for your shot. And I'm telling you this right now, I have studied the best shooters in, in the world for over 40 years, and I don't see anybody squaring up. I see their face squared up, but I don't see their body lined up. I see every good shooter, every good shooter, including, I've watched some videos of some good shooters, who are doing an instructional video and they say square up and yet when you watch the film, when you watch them shooting, they are not square. The face is square to the target, but every good shooter has a lead shoulder and a trail shoulder. They are not square. And you'll also find, Josh, you go down to my feet, uh, you know that notch in your shoe right there where the other shoe fits in and I move back there so I've got a lead foot and a trail foot, right? My shoulders are going to match that line right across there. I've got my left foot slightly withdrawn on a right-handed shooter. And so I have a lead shoulder and a trail shoulder. And the reason for that is, again, when, you know, uh, when, when I was uh, throwing darts, you know, I had a, I turned slightly, and what it does is allows now this alignment process, the, the, the hand, the, the elbow, the knee, and the toe on, on this side, they all get lined up in kind of a little a narrow elevator shoot, and it lets my eye get involved in that little vertical plane also so that it's easier for me to aim. If I'm squared up, what happens with players is the ball now starts to come in front of their face. And now you have a problem with what they say the elbow's out. The elbow isn't out. 
The ball is what's making the elbow go out. Move the ball back where it's supposed to go. Watch what the elbow does. Okay, so the elbow makes makes the, the basketball go straight. So again, I'm going to be slightly turned with my upper body matching the angle of, of my feet right there. And now I can get this eye involved in helping me to align for the shot. All right, so the last thing I want to do right now is to uh, give you a little bit of a, I don't know if I call it a drill or a competition that we use that really uh, helps us become more accurate free throw shooters. Everybody's always trying to find ways to uh, shoot free throws better. And so uh, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about a, a competition. You can either do this as a league within your team. All your, all your team members are going against everybody else. So every day there's a competition and you create a round robin, you keep league standings, and those league standings change from day to day. But it, it, now at Mesa State, we had a free throw ladder, and if you will email me, and I'll put my email address on here, but if you'll email me, I'll send you a picture of our free throw ladder and, and uh, with an explanation of uh, how we work that into our competition. But we also, we use this game, either the league uh, standings or the free throw ladder, whoever's at the top on Thursday going into the weekend's game, is, automatic, is going to be our captain and is automatically going to shoot all technical free throws. It's automatic. And if they happen to be not in the game, then they get to choose someone to, to shoot uh, uh, in their place. But uh, the free throw game works like this. Let's say uh, each one's going to shoot 10 or 15. You know, I don't know what uh, number of free throws you're going to shoot with the kids. But let's say we're going to shoot uh, uh, 15 free throws today. All right? So I'm going against Josh. And uh, every time we shoot, we grade the quality of the free throw. And so the scoring works like this. Uh, I shoot a ball and I swish it. That's worth three points, okay? Uh, Josh shoots a ball and he makes it, but it nicks the rim. It hits, hits the rim one time. That's a two point free throw, all right? If I then shoot and I hit the rim more than one, more than once, okay, so it goes bounce, bounce, maybe even bounce a third time, it goes in, that's worth one point. And a miss, of course, is worth zero. So Josh and I can be involved in a free throw contest. We could both go uh, 15 for 15, but if Josh has uh, 12 swishes, uh, he's probably going to beat me pretty handily. And so what happens is instead of kids just trying to make free throws, now they're trying to really uh, be as accurate as they can because they know that swishes and deflected may score more points for them. So in conclusion, if you can learn to uh, have good uh, distance judgment, which uh, targeting is part of that, if you can get reasonable arch, and if you can learn to shoot the ball straight, you're on your way to becoming a better basketball shooter.